Right, good afternoon guys, welcome to G's Tight Lines. Finally, a break in the weather. It's been horrendous today, woke up this morning and it was bucketing it down. So finally, um, despite what the weatherman said, the weather's broken and it's given us an opportunity to get out and wet a fly this afternoon. So, you join me this afternoon, back again at Innes Fly Fisheries. Those of you who watched my previous videos uh, will know just what a fan I am of this place. Um, good friends, Teresa and Dave, that run it and own it. So, I've got some with me this afternoon, Matthew, so we're going to hopefully have a few trout. Um, and if we are successful and we do get a few trout, we might do a um, catch and cook for you, which will be something new to the channel. Um, right, like I've said before, when I've headed up, um, I'll keep an eye on the website for the fishery or have a chat with Dave. Um, I haven't had an opportunity to chat with Dave today, but from the catch reports from yesterday and the day before, um, the fly choice has been a bit fickled. Uh, but there's one fly that has been mentioned, and that's the Montana. So um, I tend to tie the Montana normally for the larger reservoirs, for places like um, Colliford, um, Sibley Black and the like. So I've got my Monta uh, Montanas here. These are on a size 12. So I'm going to stick a Montana on the top and then fish it New Zealand style uh, with a leader probably a foot and a foot and a half. Um, probably with either a weighted nymph or a scud or similar on. If we have no joy that way, I'll change it up and probably try, try something like a damsel. Um, one of the larger, brightly coloured flies that I normally have quite a lot of success with it here. Having had a walk around with Matthew, um, due to the waterfall that we've had over the last day, um, the water is quite coloured up, so I might have to change it up a bit today, but there looks like there's a lot of fish rising, and uh, again from the um, website, I know that Dave and Teresa have stocked quite a few fish over the last couple of days. So fingers crossed, um, we'll get a few fish. If not, it's a beautiful afternoon just to be out with my son, and um, have a cast. All right, guys, hopefully we'll bring some action and we'll catch up with you soon. All the best. Well 
Right guys, there we go, there's just the scores of stuff. There we are, lovely little, beautifully marked rainbow trout. Um, I'm going to dispatch this fish and take it home and do a catch and cook. Thanks guys, tight lines. Right guys, we're back from the lake. Um, welcome to my humble abode. So I've been let loose in the kitchen. Um, as you can see, we have one trout. So the ingredients are going to be um, it's quite a simple recipe, I've done this a few times before. So one fresh lime, fresh lemon, some parsley, some fresh garlic, um, some crushed black pepper, some sea salt and some olive oil. So what we'll do is we'll gut the fish first, I'm going to bake it whole um, and then we're going to oven bake it for 12 to 15 minutes in a preheated oven and then hopefully thoroughly enjoy it. So I'm quite looking forward to this. Um, this fish has been out of the water now for less than an hour. So in terms of freshness, short of cooking it on, this, on the bank when it's been landed, it can't get much fresher. So I'm really looking forward to this, as is my good lady wife. So we're gonna crack on, get it gutted. I've um, got my trusty old Daiwa fillet knife. Story behind this knife, I actually swapped this for two micro machines when I was 12 years old, and it's still going strong now. I'm only 17 now, so it's not that old, but it's still going good. Right guys, let's get to it. So first thing I'm going to do is score the fish relatively deep. We're not going to descale it because it's not necessary, it's not like a big bass or a bream or pollock fillet. Score into the flesh, turn them over, same again, beautiful thick flesh. So that's the last of the filling knife, I don't need that anymore. Get rid of that. Okay. So So first things first, we're gonna chop some lemon. Hey, well, old Delia would be proud of me. I reckon, at the moment, three slices is ample. All we're going to do is place them nice and neat inside his belly. Let's turn it over so you can see. Okay, so there's three there. And then we're going to have a bit of the lime. I find with trout, because it's obviously a predatory great game fish, the meat can sometimes be quite earthy. Um, by adding the citrus, it tends to take that away. Ha ha. Right, so next I've got some fresh parsley. Not a lot, I find it quite an overpowering taste. I'll wallop some of that in there. A little bit. Okay. Tuck that all in nicely. Okay. And then again, this is down to personal choice, but I find a, a little nifty of garlic. Not very good at tronic, as you can tell. Not something I do very often. Okay, yeah, just 
one of them in there. Proper job. Handsome. Okay, right, moving on. So first, I think I need to rinse my hands. Please. Don't worry, kitchen hygiene critics, this will go in the wash after. Got a bit of parsley left there. We'll stick that in there. Right, take the olive oil and then put quite a generous for falls in the fish. Douse on the outside. Okay. Pop that there. And a bit of black pepper, this one's got chilies in it as well, so that'd be pretty nice. Quite generous. Take a bit of the old sea salt. Too much, I'm not too fussed on too much salt, and then give all that a good rub in to where we've made those incisions in the meat, and that will. I'm sure, kitchen people help me with words, infuse the meat, I guess, I suppose that's right. Okay, proper job. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. Okay, I'll just rinse my hands. The same again on this side. I need to hurry up, so I am going to start. So a bit of olive oil, a bit of black pepper, nice generous amount. Just for the record, any fish I ever harvest is only ever for food, or if it's things like mackerel, occasionally they'll be for bait as well. But nothing is killed for the sake of it. Um, anything that comes home goes on the table. And I think that's really important for stock preservation. Um, and for the future stock, and for the future sport as well. Oh, I've got a youngster that's just getting into it, and if we don't preserve it now, in years to come, our youth won't have the sport to enjoy. And then all I do is just get the lemon, just give that a squeeze on top. Pour over. Squeeze again. And then the same with the lime. Okay, so that is the fish prepped. Wash my hands again. Right, so we've got some spuds already in the oven, which Louise has very kindly put on for us. Get that out of the way. So here's some spuds. Get them out before they get ruined. Ooh, that's hot. How long 
going to do with this fish is just make a parcel. Okay. Pretty much like cooking them on either coals or on the barbecue. What we're doing by doing this is it keeps the moisture in and make the fish lovely. Okay, so I haven't sealed that around the fish. I'm going to make it as airtight as possible, a bit like a pasty. Okay. And then, open her up again. Hopefully this tray's big enough. Okay. Place the whole fish in there. Just about big enough. Go. So it's 25 past 7. We'll have a check at 25.2. We'll give it 10 minutes and give it a check. Right, guys, hopefully the proof is in the eating. Right, guys, so that's now been 20 odd minutes. So hopefully this is it because otherwise my wife's going to be eating her arm in a minute because she's hungry. Go for big reveal. Oh, it smells delicious. Yeah, that's done. Transferring this across to the plate. I know it will do. There you go, guys. Freshly caught, freshly cooked rainbow trout. Let's get it on the table and see how good it is. Right, here we go. Digging in. Thumbs up.